Good afternoon and welcome to KWN Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic. I'm Heath Johnson, the Dade Middle School Assistant Principal. Uh, on this side is Jessica Reed and Stephanie, on the other side is Stephanie Durham. Miss Reed is an inclusion and resource special education teacher at Dade Middle School. And Miss Durham is our media specialist and they have matching shirts today as you can see they are known as the googly girls and they have a blog and they have been doing a lot of cool things with google classroom and they're they're going to be speaking about that today uh, we have a lot of good stuff going on at Dade middle school uh, we got testing coming up this week i know the middle school started today uh, excuse me the elementary school started yesterday and the middle school will start monday uh, this is going to be a technology heavy show on things we're talking about um, our board of education and dr harris made an investment in our schools to uh, get our chromebooks in every classroom a classroom set and we're going to talk a little bit about how we've been using that uh, testing this week uh, the state has mandated previously that all testing will be online this year which makes things go actually easier for us but we didn't want the reason we have all this technology just to be for a test. Uh, we're, we're trying to teach our, skids, our students 21st century skills that they're going to need in the workplace. But first up, uh, testing this week, parents, grandparents, uh, be sure your students do a great job of getting in bed early this week. We want them getting a good night's sleep. We want them eating breakfast and please have them to school on time and please get them to school period unless they are they are ill then we, we don't want them to to be there uh, monday we're going to be having our first day of english language arts it's the writing portion tuesday we have sections two or three of english language arts wednesday is math and thursday and friday our eighth grade will be the only group testing with science and social studies. Our sixth and seventh grade students at that time will be taking a teacher made benchmark test in science and social studies. So they will be testing, it just won't be on, on the milestones. Uh, Ms. Reed, I know you have been working very hard with your students on getting ready for the milestones. Could you talk of talk about some things that you've been doing in the classroom to help prepare your students sure so right now in my current classroom we have been just reviewing all of the units we kind of I just kind of told the kids hey we're gonna just hit all the standards just so we're aware because that's what we've been doing all school year and then today actually we took a practice milestones for the students in my class they have accommodations and so we want to make sure that they understand because they've used the accommodations all year but we want to make sure they understand how to use accommodations when it comes to the milestones so right. that they're prepared and they know that they don't need to take the test in five minutes it needs to be longer they need to take effort they need to show what they know because they are smart yeah it's a, an opportunity for our students to, to really celebrate what they have learned this year we don't want this to be a gotcha for lack of a better better word but you know they've worked hard our teachers have worked hard and we want them to be able to really celebrate what they have done uh, miss durham is our media specialist she supports our classroom teachers and i know she's worked she works really closely with some of our ela teachers in some of the reading skills and, and writing skills when they're doing research papers which will come into play on the milestones could you talk about some of the things that you've done um, yes, um, some of the things that I've done to help prepare the students for the test, um, I've worked with Ms. Reed and we have talked about different story elements, um, plot, setting, um, theme, all of those, um, and I've used technology to reinforce all of those skills. You did a really cool lesson for me where we talked to just about the different genres of fiction because the kids are going to have to be able to compare and contrast between like poetry or fiction and nonfiction. and Ms. Durham was able to find me some really cool video clips for the kids to be able to identify and see it rather than just always read it. Right, reading it from a book. Uh, a lot of our kids, I know they learn better by Visually. visual, yeah. yes, thank you, and kinetic. And we have to access that prior knowledge so we have to hit them where they know what's going on right 
and uh, these are two very good teachers that, that do a great job of working with our students. Um, biggest days are probably Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Like I said, that is ELA and math. Uh, for our eighth grade students, that is very imperative because they have to pass the reading portion and the math portion to be able to advance to the ninth grade. Uh, if they fall a little short, we're going to do some remediation at the middle school for two or three weeks, and they'll get another opportunity opportunity to take that test. Um, as I said, Milestones is now set up on online. Uh, our tech team in the county, and I will give a shout out to Bill Banks and Chris Green. They do a great job. Uh, they they have given us every opportunity to be successful. The last two to three years that we have tested some students online has went very smoothly. Our vendor, which is DRC, which has a contract with the state to provide the test, had zero problems out of them. So we've been very fortunate not to have issues like Tennessee has had in the past. And other school systems around the state have had because they don't have the infrastructure here that our Board of Education and Dr. Harris has so graciously invested in and allowed us to this, these opportunities. Uh, folks, we're going to be taking a short break and tune back in to reading, writing, and arithmetic. The Moore family name has built a legacy of trust, compassion, and peace of mind by standing with families during time of loss. Now in our 70th year, the Moore family commitment grows even stronger from affordable traditional services to cremation. Our experienced staff stands ready to follow through on you and your family's wishes. Since 1945, the Moore family of funeral homes, North Sand Mountain and Trenton, always dedicated to those we serve. At Comfort Gallery at Kimball, comfort is the key. And the key to making it easier to sleep, sit, and stand is a new power lift chair from Catnapper. Catnapper's power lift chairs feature comfort coil seating for long lasting comfort and a powerful yet smooth, quiet motor. Some models even include heat and massage. It's really comfort at the touch of a button. See the full selection today when you visit Comfort Gallery. Free delivery and setup, one year free layaway, and six and 12 months, same as cash, available at Comfort Gallery. 780 Main Street, one mile north of I-24, exit 152A, Kimball, Tennessee. Can you gig it? Oh, yes, you can. We know you've been waiting for a long time, and now Tennessee Valley Net is bringing it to you. Gigabit Internet Service, now available in certain areas of Dade County. Not just fast, super fast Internet Service, now available from Tennessee Valley Net. People are talking, I mean really smiling, about gig speed Internet, available in limited areas from Tennessee Valley Net. Call today at 706-657-4367 or log on at tvn.net and see if gig speed is available where you are. We know you'll gig it from Tennessee Valley Net. When you or a loved one is facing a life-limiting illness, hospice care may be the answer. At Tapestry Hospice, the patient is the focus of our care. We are here to serve you and facilitate your wishes. Tapestry caregivers are concerned with managing your pain, keeping you in touch with your physician, and helping you make plans for the future. Hospice is life-affirming, and Tapestry Hospice can help you deal with all aspects of life, mind, body, and soul. Call Tapestry Hospice for more information, 706-383-8812. That's 706-383-8812. Tapestry Hospice. Redefining Hope. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank Marion Countyans will ever need. At 402 North Cedar Avenue in South Pittsburgh, 4765 Main Street in Jasper, and at 14087 Highway 28 in Whitwell. Providing the highest standard of customer services with a personal touch. Our associates can help you with personal loans, personal lines of credit, a variety of mortgage loans, and more. And we offer real-time internet banking too. See us in South Pittsburgh, Jasper, and Whitwell today. Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank Marion Countyans will ever need. Need. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. And welcome back to Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic. You're with Dade Middle School today. And once again, I have Miss Jessica Reed and Miss Stephanie Durham uh, co-hosting with me. And they're going to be talking a little bit more about our technology, uh, where we've come from as a district or as a school, and where we may be going. Ms. Durham? Okay. Well, our school today is totally different than it was two years ago. Two years ago, our technology consisted of a couple Chromebook carts and um, three laptop carts, and then we had three computer labs. 
Um, that has totally changed now. We now have a classroom set of Chromebooks for each academic teacher. And also each connections teacher has the opportunity to check out carts and those carts have enough Chromebooks on them for them to cover their entire class. Um, we have also updated our website. Um, we Over the summer, I know that um, Bill Bankson worked really hard to revamp the website um, and things are so much easier to work with. It's more appealing visually too and yes. along with this technology there are a lot of things there that you can view not only from our, our school webpage but from the district webpage and the high school and elementary schools. Uh, hashtag watch us climb, there are a lot of really good clips that, that you can watch that shows you where we're, we're climbing, we're going, and we're really excited. You know, on the website, actually, Mr. Herm, didn't you put just on the bottom right corner, there mm -hmm. is actually, if the parents want to see what the milestones may look like, there's actually mm -hmm. a practice test that yes. the kids can, you know, to try. Yes, I believe that is uh, Georgia Virtual Exper or GA Virtual Experience com, and your child can access, access that from home. Is some sample milestone questions. It shows the technology and, and tools that that student will be able to use on the test. And we, we have all that on our website. Yes. If you look in the, like Jessica said, in the bottom right hand corner, um, I believe it's called Milestones Practice. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we saw where we came from. We don't have, we did not have a lot of technology. We did have Promethean boards, which are smart boards in each classroom. Our teachers were using that, but you know, we honestly we were we were a little behind where we wanted to be. And with our kids today, they are so in, engrossed in technology and their digital natives that we had to we had to meet them where they're at. We we want to teach them. We want them to learn, but we have to meet them where we're at. What what are we doing now? Well, one of the coolest things that I think we can do um, with each of the students having a Chromebook on their desk, we have a subscription to a program that is called Nearpod. And with Nearpod, anything that is showing on the teacher's computer is also showing on each individual student's Chromebook. Uh, this just allows for, more, allows for more interactivity with the students and the teacher. Um, and it just it keeps the kids more involved and therefore they they learn more. Well Nearpod's also really cool because it is a way that as teachers we can kind of judge and see how they're doing because we can mm -hmm. ask a question and the kids we can get an immediate response and to see if they're understanding or if they're not or if we need to go back and kind of reteach something. It's also really cool because the kids can either do it by themselves, it can be a live lesson mm -hmm. where we're doing it as a class or it can be student paced. So if they want to review you for any particular reason they can so anything that you as a teacher have posted on Nearpod the students can go back and access that they can because what will happen is we basically just give them a code and they from Google Classroom they can click the link enter the code and they can pull up the Nearpod that's, that's pretty cool it is really really neat uh, besides Nearpod what other tools are we using in the classroom guys we have Moby Max which is an assessment platform um, this has helped our teachers tremendously in preparing the students for the milestones. It allows them to find the gaps and that in turn lets them know exactly what they need to focus on for the year. And that may be different for each individual student. Um, and then again, it may also just be for classes. We, uh, we take a universal screener using Moby Max at the beginning of the school year. We do this again after Christmas, and that, like I said, that allows us, number one, to see where are our students at, gives us an idea of where we need to take them, and it shows us how much progress they're making every time we take that universal screener. It gives us data to use to make informed decisions in the classroom. Um, I know besides that, we're also using things like Flocabulary. You are a flocabulary, flocabulary 
guru. I am. I'm what they call a certified master of vocabulary. And vocabulary is a really awesome website. The kids have access to, through it because of their Google account. They are able to basically, it's just really neat hip hop songs about different topics. You have science, we have history, we have English. I know there's a whole song about characterization. I know I talked to one of our math teachers and she actually played for me a song about long division and the kids know it and the kids will remember it. And so it's just a way easy, fun thing for them to learn and to review. Vocabulary just rolled out a really cool feature where as teachers we can individualize lessons for the kids. So if we know one of our kids is might be struggling with long division, we can assign them something to kind of as if they're working on their own for individual. Right. And it's just the kids don't think that they're working because it is fun. It is fun. They get to watch the videos and you can see kids bobbing up and down, at least in my classroom, when they watch the vocabulary <laughs> because it's so it's some I can't rap. So let me let somebody else wrap right. for me to explain it. It is being used in the other classrooms. Yes. I actually went in a classroom to observe the other day, and they were doing some independent practice, and I saw kids that were singing themselves. And I said, what are you doing? They're like, oh, this is the vocabulary song to help me remember the steps to this. I'm like, okay. So I'm glad that's paying off. And uh, just so you know, vocabulary just became a part of near a part of Nearpod, so they're actually now combining so it's a better student platform for engagement. So I'm really excited to kind of see what those two how they uh, interact. Another tool that our teachers and students are using is called Google Classroom, and this is really I don't want to say revolutionized, but it's made a big change on what our teachers are doing and how our students are accessing it in regards to not only classwork, but if they are absent from school, if they're home for whatever reason, this can be accessed anywhere. Uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Rising Fawn Hardware is your place for all your gardening needs. Seeds, onion sets, cabbage, strawberry plants, and more. A complete line of home hardware items, too. Everything for the house, including plumbing, hardware, and metal roofs. Plus, Rising Fawn Hardware has everything you need for your livestock, including name brands like Nutria, Tucker, and Faithway. Always with a hometown atmosphere, it's Rising Fawn Hardware. 4300 Highway 11 South in Rising Fawn. Open 8 in the morning till 6 at night, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, and 8 to noon on Wednesday. Even open on Saturday from 8 until 4. Rising Fawn on hardware. Have lunch or dinner at Guthrie's, home of the original golden fried chicken finger and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's can help you plan your family's meals or get-togethers with bucket specials every Tuesday, those delicious wings on Wednesday, and platters every day of the week. Plus, get sweet tea by the gallon. Remember, Guthrie's has a party room for small gatherings, too. Guthrie's, Highway 136 West in Trenton, home of those golden fried chicken fingers and the best chicken finger sauce in the world. Guthrie's, North fast food, good food fast. Georgia Northwestern Technical College is now accepting applications for classes. We offer programs in business, health, industrial, and public service at six campus locations with financial aid options as well. Take day, evening, or online classes to get your degree, diploma, or certificate. Apply now. Drop by one of our campuses today or check us out at gntc.edu. Georgia Northwestern Technical College. Get focused. Get hired. Landers McLarty Ford of Fort Payne is your destination for quality automobile service. Landers McLarty is second to none when it comes to service on your vehicle. You can drop by and see us on Glen Boulevard Southwest in Fort Payne. Call our service department at 256-845-1101 or schedule an appointment online at LandersMcLartyFordFortPayne.com. So whether you drive a Ford or any other make of car, SUV or truck, see our ASC certified and Ford factory trained technicians today at Landers McLarty Ford in Fort Payne. Come hungry and leave satisfied at Cloud's Pizza Highway 71 in Higdon. Cloud's Pizza uses only the freshest ingredients, and we hand toss our own pizza dough. Our pizzas are made from scratch when you order, so they're always fresh. And don't forget about our famous Sand Mountain Cheese Sticks. You can eat from the Daily Buffet or try a mouth-watering hamburger or cheeseburger. Come see your friends at Cloud's Pizza Highway 71 in Higdon and never leave hungry. Call ahead at 597-3100 for Cloud's Pizza. Visit us on Facebook at Cloud's Pizza and more. Come see us at Cloud's Pizza.
And welcome back to Reading, Writing, and Arithmetic. You are with Heath Johnson, Jessica Reed, and Stephanie Durham from Dade Middle School. And we've been talking about technology in our school and a little about testing today. At the end of the last break, uh, we were starting to talk a little about Google Classrooms and what it, how it's really changing the way we were doing things. Uh, Ms. Reed, would you like to just explain a little bit of what Google Classroom is. Sure, Google Classroom is basically a platform that the teachers and students can use to can use to communicate with one another. It is a way that we can send students documents, we can provide them with slideshows, we can provide forms, any and everything. Pretty much we can put in Google Classroom. You can even post links to blogs, you can post links to YouTube videos or anything that might be of review. It's really neat because if you have a student who is absent, they can go to their Google Classroom and they can look and find out what did they miss. Or vice versa, if a teacher's absent, the teachers can provide instruction via Google Classroom. And it's also really neat because the kids don't have to have paper a lot of times or pencils. Their assignments are online and so they're able to respond. Another thing I like about Google Classroom is that you can see when a student has an assignment or if they don't and they say, well, I lost it. No, magically, it's right here. I can see it. But it's been a great way for our students and teachers to kind of go into that 21st century technology because yes. we're not using as much paper. We're still using engagement with textbooks and that kind of thing, but it's allowed for easier mobility, I think, between learning different concepts and being able to be productive. Students can actually, one of the coolest things about Google Classroom is it does incorporate Google Suites. You can use Google Docs and the kids can actually collaborate on the same piece of paper. And I've seen that actually firsthand. Kids have been working on research projects, whether slideshows and, you know, in the past, if you didn't get to do it in class, it's hard for a middle school student to meet up after school to, to collaborate, but they can go at home and log in and they can they can work there and everybody else sees what the other student mm -hmm. is doing at real time. They can chat and things of that nature. And you mentioned Google Suites. Uh, for those of you that don't know, if you will think, I, I know I'm comfortable using like Microsoft Word, uh, word processing unit, processing unit uh, PowerPoints and things like that. Google has created a suite that has their own word processing and slideshow and uh, like, the, the docs. I was going to say like one of the really cool things about Google Docs is unlike Microsoft Word where you have to hit the save button in Google Docs you don't have to hit the save it automatically saves it for you. And that is very helpful I know when I was in college typing things <laughs> up computer crashes it's gone our students don't have to, to, deal, with have to deal with that. And, uh, and also one of the best things about using the Google Suites for education um, anywhere that a student can get internet access they can get their documents or their slideshows. Um, all they have to do is log into their Google account and everything that they did during the day is there. So if they didn't finish an assignment and they have a computer at home, they can go home and finish that. Uh, I do know some educators that are flipping their classroom using Google Classroom. They'll post a clip of them teaching a lesson which the homework for the students is to watch them teaching the lesson. And they come in the next day and they are able to have a class discussion and show what they know. And the teacher can take time to make to correct any misconceptions. Uh, really what's going on with this is, is really revolutionizing what's going on mm -hmm. in the educational world. And I'm really proud of our teachers for embracing this. Uh, every teacher in our building is using Google Classroom yeah. right now. And these two ladies really are our, our main trainers. Uh, they are both Google certified. Uh, level two. Level two. <laughs> and once again, their shirts are the Googly Girls. And could you tell them where to find your blog? Sure. Ms. Durham, do you want to share? Yes. If you want to see our blog, which contains just tips and tricks for um, using Google or any technology, um, you can find that at www.dadetechblog.com. And how often do you all update that? 
Uh, usually two or three times a week we add something to it. I was say, I just added, because I, I believe Dade Elementary is going to use Flipgrid this summer mm-hmm. on for a reading project. And I actually just did a what they call a screencastify where I basically recorded myself on the computer doing a program and I recorded it on how to use Flipgrid, which is a great another easy free program to use. And so anybody can check the blog and see how to use Flipgrid. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We actually, you know, we're the Googly Girls, but we are also not our only training here, but we are going to a conference in Kentucky at Murray State University this so summer. Presenting there. We are. We are going to be presenting about collaboration using Google. So collaboration in Dade County, we're reaching other schools across the country. Right. I'm very proud of you guys. I know y'all have worked really hard and y'all are definitely an asset to our school. Um, and let's talk a little more about technology. And I want everyone to understand that technology is not is not the teacher. It's a tool that we use just like te- textbooks, the internet, videos. These are all tools. And in the hands of master teachers, they can work magic. Uh, we have Miss Reed ha- has one of our is a sponsor of one of our clubs called the Chrome Squad. I am the Chrome Squad is my pet project for I'm working on an EDS through Kennesaw State in instructional technology. The idea behind it is that we have a group of about 15 to 18 students who are actually taking on learning about Google because they're going to do trainings for our staff. So we recently have had one student do a screencastify about how to add something to a Google Doc. So the kids are learning how to how to work Google so that they can help their teachers understand how to use it. So it kind of makes the students the teachers and they really, really have enjoyed it because they're learning all the cool tricks about Google's Google that the that the teachers aren't aware about. Our students love to teach us new tricks. Yes, that, yes, that yes, yes. For yes. Sure. And uh, we've we've got that going on. We've gotten some grants lately with dealing with technology. Uh, Miss Beverly Adkins uh, what's the name of the group? The yeah, Jessica Dress. Um, Miss Atkins actually won a crystal, a grant from Crystals for STEM. It's for science, technology, and math. And she actually won it for doing robotics. We originally had a technology club, and we split into three. So I have the Chrome Squad, and then Miss Atkins has the robotics club and so she got a grant for this upcoming year on how the kids are going to actually get to learn how to code and program their the robotics that is cool um, and once again that this stuff is it, it's the future of where jobs are at uh, robotics mechatronics mechatronics i guess it is you know at school we also have the other club is skills usa where we have i think miss uh Miss Hill. Hill has been on before talking about NASA and this and the 3D project or 3D printer that she has in her classroom now. Which is yeah, it, we're able to give our students access to things that we probably never even dreamed about as as children. Uh, the technology definitely is it's crazy how far it's came. And, and I've said this earlier, but I do want to thank our board of education and, and Dr. Harris again for providing us with these tools to give our our students, our kids here in Dade County, the opportunity to, to research all this, to participate in it, and it may be their future, something they want to do. We, we need to expose them to all these opportunities, and they have given us the chance to do that. And once again, thank you. Uh, it's almost time to wrap up, but I do want to remind everybody we have testing starting at Dade Middle School on Monday. We will start testing no later than 8.30. More than, more than likely, it'll be around 8.15. If your student comes in after testing has started, they are not able to enter the testing room until, until the day's complete. So let's please be early. Please eat breakfast, and let's get them a great night's sleep. Um, any of you guys have anything to, to add? Yeah, no. All right. Thank you for joining us, joining us in Dade Middle School today on reading, writing, and arithmetic.